personal. They are a person losing their home. They are could be a person falling under the, the poverty level. It could be um, a family where a kid doesn't get to go to college. It could be you could lose medical data, and that could really mess up somebody's insurance. It could mess up somebody's job. Um, so it's very, very, very personal. The Social Security Act is like this big. There are laws pointing in and out of it. And it's very complicated when we try to change things and make sure that we're still legal. Um, we're also a trust fund organization. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with that. But every the amount of money that we spend by and large comes out of the trust fund. So my salary comes out of the trust fund. Every computer we buy comes out of the trust fund. So we're, we're by law, we have to be very um, specific about what we buy. And we, our CBAs are, end up being certainly very, very, very important to us. So what happens if we make a little mistake? So a little mistake to us is absolutely huge. And think of a mistake as it could be a mistake in a program, it could be exposure, so our data could be exposed in error, we could be hacked, um, we could let PII out. I used the same numbers that I showed you in the slide a few times ago, and now I said if we made a one-tenth of one percent mistake, but this is annual, not the, not the daily numbers that I showed you before. But this is what we would affect. Um, and the money is just, just very huge across many, many individuals. Remember, many of whom are your, could be you, your aunts, your uncles, your neighbors, um, your friends, your coworkers. Um, we could expose many disability documents, medical records, and we could lose or, or do something inaccurate with all those earnings records. So we have to be extremely careful. So they remember innovating in that kind of climate. So added to this, the, the metaphor of the social security ship, we have a little tugboat of innovation. Um, and my staff again, uh, popped up against those 68,000 employees. Um, I only have 17 of those, so we're very, very, very tiny. Um, so we have to, you know, sort of push, prod, kick, scream, do all kinds of uh, things to get people to listen to us and to change. Um, I kind of think of this as we, we kind of have a culture of worry, where we worry that if we were to screw up, who could we have hurt? Who could we hurt? But nonetheless we still need to, to, to progress and to disrupt and to challenge and to innovate. Um, and where we need, our, and we can't do that alone. So we really absolutely need our security partners to be with us as we do that. Because I guarantee you, when I said that it was in the fabric of the SSA employees to not do something just what I'll consider to be stupid, it's in, in my staff and all the people that we touch who innovate. We don't want to do something stupid. We need security folks with, with us. We need them hand in hand. We don't need security folks to just say no. We need security folks to listen. We don't need security folks to scare us. We, we get it. I swear we get it. Um, we need your smarts. We need your, your intellect. We need your help. We don't need competition. We, we just need you as partners working with us because we also, very much like you, want to move our agencies forward and don't want to screw up. So, talk a lot about what it's like in Social Security and how we kind of need your help. So what is it like to innovate <coughs> at a social services agency. I, I, I've been invited to, to so many meetings in Washington where they talk about innovation. And I swear, every time I get invited to an innovation-type meeting, 
they're doing very, very valid things and very valuable things for the country. And one of the last ones had to do with nanotechnology and biofuels. But at the end of that meeting, I was just thinking, what is, I can't take that back to Social Security. So for Social Security, I mean, we don't invent stuff. But what we do is we try to change the service and the user experience for the public so that they can be more comfortable and, and they can be more confident that the stuff we're offering on the web is something that they would actually use. For the longest time, SSA was saying, it's easy, file online. I, we're probably still saying that. But what we found out, people expect it to be easy. You don't expect to go to Amazon.com and have it be hard. You expect it to be easy, so get over that. Move on. So what we expect is that you're going to make us feel good as we do it. That we're going to, we being the public, that we're going to be, they're going to be confident that when they push the button at the end, it's going to work. Not that they're going to get hung up, or not that the data that they put in isn't the data that went somewhere, and all of a sudden they thought they were retiring and something else happened. They have to have the confidence, not the easy. And yes, it does have to be easy, but like I said, they expect that. So um, again, it's comfort, it's confidence, it's, it's ways that the public will really use the stuff you put out there. Because you know what, if, it isn't com if they aren't confident and they aren't comfortable, they're going to call your 800 number. And when they call your 800 number, you've done nothing. Because you put up, a, you've worked hard, you put up an application, it doesn't work in their minds, it might work in our minds, but it doesn't work in their minds. So they call the 800 number or they visit the office and all you've done is worked hard and you haven't achieved anything because they're showing up anyway. And they're mad. You know? <laughs> so you'd rather, you'd rather not have that. So, so then innovation, how did we start? And really we're only, we've only, um, only just begun. Uh, we started November of last year. Um, and honestly, we started from, we, we had a brand new CIO. The CIO is, and, and SSA is principally responsible for security policy. Um, Brad, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, security policy, um, re responsible for investment management, strategy, those kinds of things. But not, he didn't have any, any um, tech, really heavy technicians inside of the group that he just moved into. And, and he had not a, a group that he could do testing and experimenting and researching in. So he didn't like that. So he created the Office of, of Innovation, but that was all well and good because in November he created it, but we didn't have, we had me. Um, we, we basically um, had a couple of other people. So we didn't have much for staff, you know. Um, the staff that we had was good, but we just didn't have the numbers. We didn't have any place to sit. Um, we didn't have any budget, so we couldn't buy anything. Um, and what was happening is this, our new CIO that just had created this organization was just throwing ideas at us and we really didn't have any group or any money or any place to do anything with, with, with those ideas. So it was pretty challenging. So we started with how do you build it, how do you build it, we, we decided to build it with starting with the people because we felt like people were going to um, service you the best. So what we did is uh, we worked really hard. We decided to work and, and only hire technical people. Um, most of you, I'm assuming, are from the government, so you know what a detail lead is, or maybe that's just social security's term, I don't know. But we re relied very hard on borrowing people from the business units so that the, they could help us with what were the business problems. So we.